What's going on YouTube? Earth Power here. Here with me today is CVH. Say hi. Hi everybody. CVH. And also with me, Gordon Hunt, aka Gorby. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. AKA Rogond09 on yes, Bojo. Thank true that. Yes. And we are bringing to you today a discussion video. Me, CVH, and Gorby are going to bat around, uh, I guess, ask ideas, ideas, and, ideas and talk about things that uh, we feel passionately about. And uh, Or not as much. I have a <laughs> list of stuff to go by, but we're actually going to jump right into a post on Pojo. We've been having a pretty big uh, discussion My on head. there about... Uh, I mean, what do you want to say it's about? I haven't read these new ones Well, yet. it initially started as a discussion about producing evidence of whether or not Dual Masters was going to come back to yes. the United States. Yes. Well, yeah. it originally started as the, uh, the thread for your... The uh, yes. The threads for I'll, I'll, post, I'll post the link to the... To yeah. the he named it wrong and shit it. got crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now it has devolved into a discussion about why certain decks are broken, why certain uh, formats, if you will, were... Stages yeah. of the game yeah. it's, it's, it's basically like comparing English to, Jap or I guess, the Japanese meta, and like why, like I guess, we should have things implemented should the game come back, and why things should stay the same <laughs> to the way, I guess, the American meta was when it died here. So Yeah, like whether or not we should pick up where we left off or just completely start from scratch. It's impossible to pick up where we left off because yeah. the old players would have a huge advantage because of all the cards yeah. that were released. You know, right. So they'd have to start over, of course. Right. They're going yeah. to bring it back, but they're going to start it off with basic card. Like the way basic it was. But anyways, the post that I'm going to jump into was... Uh, uh, I'm not going to name names, but I'm sure he'll figure himself out if he actually reads or listens to this. Or she. Or I, I don't know. This is the internet. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna or, try. Or, I'm gonna try not to say mean things, but it might be the way it goes. He posts a lot. He, if it's if it's a he, I'm just gonna call it he. Let's see where it started here. I'm on the internet right now, trying to find it. Oh. I'm sorry, I have to be put through all this weight, YouTube. Where did we start? Okay, um, we started talking about a 40 card <laughs> deck limit, pretty much. That's that's really where this started to spawn, where where it kind of just got out of control, and I guess. I stated, I mean, 40-card card limits aren't a bad thing. Like, No. It's, I think all a 40-card card limit does is, from what I've stated, you'll read all this if you go to the link that I post, but what a 40-card card limit does is that it makes cards that wouldn't be good otherwise, I mean, cards that are good but not great, would make them be able to compete in, and on a tournament level, like, Future Slash, Slash Charger, Cosmic Darts, other cards that I can't think of right now. I think both Future Slash and Slash Charger would still be kind of bad. Well, think about it. In a 40-card deck, you're limited to only so much, mm -hmm. and you have to compress that to where normally, uh, for Control, for instance, this is where it started to get out of hand too, but we started talking about Control. You Slash Charge away their finishers, you Future Slash away their big, just kill spells, and you keep your other stuff that can compete with their deck, and, you're, and you just... Those yeah, but in a 40-card deck limit format, um, a lot more aggro decks are going to be played than control, So, and future slash and slash charge aren't really as effective against those kind of decks. Well, exactly. see, I don't think a 40-card card limit's going to push it in that direction, though. I think control... 40-card <laughs> control's not bad. You're just it's not hard. You're just, you're just limited to, instead of running four Hulkus, four Strain, or like two. <laughs> you run two of each, you basically just cut the numbers of everything you're running down by one or two. Because, I mean, to go from 50 to 40, it's not that hard, especially if you're only stuck to 40 and, you know, you're competing against other 40-card decks. But you also got to think, the decks that are going to see the most success are going to be those decks that can put advantage-gaining cards on the board early game. You're going to be seeing a lot more cards like Bronze Arm, a lot more Hulkus, a lot more Stream, assuming we, you know, stick to the original... Yeah, I mean, Bandless, that sort I mean, of another thing. thing is like the reason Rush is going to be like even better is because it doesn't take any hits. It can still be just as consistent as yeah. it always was in drawing answers. And if I'm well, only Rush running was like, always forty cards, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And if I'm only running like forty cards, I'm not going to run more than one burst shot. So I can burst shot, you know, like once. Then they throw out some more stuff, and I have no more answers. I run out because control has to really. Well, control uh, cut running more. a lot of triggers, anyways. Yeah, but like less. I know. You know? But you've still got Terra Pit. You've still got. Locomotive, or you've got the burst shot, you've got the phantom flame, and I mean, if you're if, run, if you run yeah, server yeah, like I do, well now I have to. Server, so. But I mean, in a forty card deck, you're gonna probably see those in shields more often, anyways. And then if you're emeralding them down, then 
You're good to go. What's your point, dude? I'm getting... <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much was the point. It was, yeah. That was, that was the point I'm stating, that you're going to have answers. Control's still going to have answers to Rush the same way it would whether it's 50 or 40. But, <laughs> I guess... I imagine, get, I imagine you probably just have to streamline control more mm -hmm. to see those answers yeah. more consistently. You can't rely... On Control's gonna be cards different. like you can't rely on cards like Squido and uh, you know Thrash to sit behind while you dig for answers. Well, you still kind of can. Oh, I mean yeah. Squido, you probably can. Yeah. I, the deck's still gonna work. It's just gonna be it's gonna take cuts. Control's gonna be the deck that's gonna see the most change in terms of numbers. I imagine you'd probably level. play like a slower form of aggro. Because, you know, aggro has elements of rush and control yeah. mixed in because it's putting presence on the board early. I'm thinking oh, the best deck, you know, back when about the beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh, oof, the beginning of Duel Masters, you know, like Water Nature, <laughs> fuck it, Water Nature, <laughs> aggro, you know, with like a splash of pits was one of the best decks back then. You know, it has like, it can control, it can, it can push and be aggressive, but it can play defensively mm -hmm. with the guards and, right. uh, you know, terra pits and emeralds, whatever. And that's more or less what control would have to turn into. Yeah is a more, I, I wouldn't say aggressive control. I mean, or a very simple, like say something that would function yeah. a little faster than normal control. Or like a, just right. a simple control, like, like two sieves, like Water Darkness yeah. would be pretty much, yeah. maybe a tiny bit of fire or something, like but you, you don't have probably like enough. Splash Bolly or something. Yeah. You probably can't Splash Bolly, but... Like two Bolly and like, like five kills. You could probably like, yeah, Phantom Swains and Burst. <laughs> it could make some other cards like, yeah. you know, Galek, the, I guess the Fire Dark or whatever. Kills yes, a blocker, yeah. discards a card from the hand. That card would become a lot more alive. You don't see. I feel like it would be now. a lot worse because like there aren't going to be that many decks running a lot of blockers anymore. Because control used to be able to stall, so now you're not training against all that. Unless someone decides to build forty card baby blocker blitz, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. or well, then you don't have like time like to play Scarlet anymore. Mono light <laughs> just block everything. <laughs> well, like, think about it. Like you just made a good point. You wouldn't use Galette because of blockers, but then think about aggro. Like how much less reliant it would be on Windex now. Like. It could, card, use it, card, it could still use it, but, but it wouldn't you'd see it a lot see, less. Yeah, it would like, be you know, I play, live. I play three in my aggro. You know, I'd probably cut it back to like one. Yeah, two, two maybe. It's good. I mean, it's good. Yeah, but and it still gives you a mana, so you can get the twin cannon to turn faster. That's true. Yeah, that's good. Okay, but that's forty card card limits, and that's where this conversation kind of started on Pojo. Uh, to take and it we're talking about further. like we're still going to have cards like Galick if the game restarts like yeah. you're not going to start with that. Well, if it no. starts from no. bare basics, then if we yeah. just have base that one to play with, then yeah. you're going to just you, see a bunch you, of consistent aggro. It's going to be like Did you water. play at the beginning? I played it like third set. Okay, um, I guess. So I, I knew when things were good. Yeah. yeah. In the very beginning, the game was really who could summon the biggest creature first. It not. <laughs> the thing was, no one in the comic chest. I saw King Defcon hit the field. Yeah. King Defcon was one of the most. I guess, prevalent threats in the meta for the first couple of sets. Which was, is weird because, like, Crystal Lancer existed. Crystal, yes, <laughs> and then Water got even better. <laughs> Defcon plus Lancer. The unblockables are ridiculous. Or just Lancer. But also, going back to that, no one... <laughs> cards like Terra Pit, Holy All, and, uh, I mean, Aqua Hulkus. You just, you didn't see the staples in the beginning. Like, you saw Hulkus in Mono Water, which was the biggest deck. Yeah, sure. you, you sort of saw it, but you never saw it really mixed in with other stuff. You yeah, didn't, it you, wasn't, didn't there was see, no, you didn't see that strategy. There you was didn't no see strategy water right. building a backbone for a deck. Right. Because Water Dark Fire was like revolutionary. That was the first time people thought, whoa, we they can, get can work together. Sieves? There's a lot of strategy to go into these three sieves and control the board. But, I mean, in the beginning, it was big creatures, and no one played Pit or Holy All or big spells like that because they just found them unnecessary. It was more about putting creatures on the board. Advantage and, didn't matter back then. Yeah. It was all about... Field presence. It was, yeah. Get a lot of big creatures on the yeah. field. The opponent couldn't deal with them because there just weren't enough answers yet in the game. And it's kind of like the beginnings of Yu-Gi-Oh! When Summon Skull was a power card. Yeah, Gemini Elf. When, exactly. I yeah. should have Red Eyes. Darkness. Drain Dragon. Dragon. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's really what we we have to look forward to if Duel Masters comes back. But, but of course, now a lot of players know that, back. you know, people are going to play cards like Pit now that we know they're good. Yeah. You know. Now, now that we have an idea, that's why of I said it, if the game came back and it was the exact same first two sets, I would definitely play Water Nature's Flash of Pits with Emerald's third set. But you know, and, and hell, uh, <laughs> what the Fire Dark Water would still be yeah, good. Still you, be still have, yeah. you still have Lost Soul. You still have. Yeah, you could play Fire Dark Nature if you want to be more aggressive with the mana game, whatever. Doesn't matter. But so food for thought. Yeah. <laughs> so the, these are two topics now: the forty card card limit and. English the, Japan. the game coming back to okay, us <laughs> were two of the big things here that this person decided to, uh, I guess, go off of. 
So, let's see. Let's let's read a few passages here. Uh, okay. So, he basically said, the fact that DM... I'm going to quote him here, so he'll know I'm talking about him if he, re if he watches it's this. It's Nerefim. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to keep it as anonymous as possible. The, I, the, I, is like, the idea is like, on a blast, yeah. don't care. <laughs> Name dropping. All right, well, that's happening. You're not a bad person. No, we're, we're not... <laughs> We're not at all attacking you, Nerefilm, but the if that's how you pronounce the, it, that the is. opinions that you have seem like you don't. Uh, yes. how, how would you say? We just it? disagree with I would your say opinions. It. I don't so much disagree with the opinions. I mean, I disagree with some of the opinions, but it's you, you state them like you don't know. You state them very matter-of-factly yeah. without a whole yeah. lot backing them up. Yeah, but uh, you. Uh, all right, but he's like the fact that DM is coming. But this back is neither here nor there. Is clear. It's not clear. We don't have an official word yet. You can't say that. Like you're you're just sending people false messages. You're, Which you're brings me to the thing that Gina posted about the wizards wanting uh, someone to work for them for Duel Masters. Yes. Carl brought me to the point that that might be for Japan's game. Yes, that was when I read that a year ago. I got an email about that. I guess because I. I don't know why I got an email about it, but I got an email about You're it. Probably sending that to like certified judges and stuff. Maybe I don't know, but I got one, and it basically said we're looking for someone to work for Wizards of the Coast to produce Duel Masters cards. I can't. It was. I mean, look at the post on Pojo. Let me let me find it. See if this is. Not, I, haven't, I haven't read it yet. Uh, it's big. You know, it's just a quote yeah, from what they asked for. It's a wall of text. Yeah. Just Devel saying, like, yeah. yeah developing develop. products, producing balance. They like basically R &D, want somebody to who has a knowledge of the game to come up with ideas for the game. They want somebody to be DM's Kevin Tewart. Kevin Tewart, of course, being Yu-Gi-Oh's like, lead okay. card designer guy, whatever. I or think Jeff that's Jones. Do you know Jeff Jones contributes to the band list? Oh, oh good for him. <laughs> Just saying. You know, but they also... want somebody who can basically come up with ideas for the what? game who would make those ideas well. work. What? I'm interested. <laughs> hey! hey. <laughs> Alright. Wow, fuck you guys. <laughs> so. But that... Oh, they didn't hear the that. way that I Sorry, saw it was it was on their it was on their Wizards of the Coast site, but they made it seem like they wanted somebody who could produce ideas for Japan. Come up with them in English, obviously, because Wizards of the Coast is based in America or wherever they're based out of. I, I, it says the location is wow. Renton, Washington. Washington. Okay, so they're in Washington, apparently. Mm -hmm. Where in so Washington? <laughs> we'd come up with ideas for the game, but they would be implemented in Japan, I guess. So. That that's how I read it the first time. I ha I'm not gonna read this now to find out, <laughs> but they 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 had their list of qualifications and stuff like that, and it's where where did I start with this? We were talking <laughs> about signs that the game was coming back definitively. Those. Oh yes, the and that that has you can't. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let me get my thoughts straight. The game's not don't don't I don't want a coffee bean. Thanks, Sue. Keep your weight, man. <laughs> I'm asleep over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely falling asleep. I'm We're gonna have to start with that. Okay. <laughs> okay, but the game's not coming back. We don't have an official thing. This uh, obviously the signs are pointing towards it, but until we hear something, we not that you can't say that it's coming back. Nobody, there's no way to you. You can't you, without you, an official you, announcement. You like we some, can't definitively prove you, you just, one way or another. I, I mean, not to call you out, but you just sound like a fool, honestly. So. You, when you when you blast false statements, it's it just yeah. it's like you don't See work there. <laughs> I mean, you don't work for them. It's like unless you're leaking secrets, in yeah, which I mean, case you're going to get arrested. So. It just makes you look like an asshole. Whoa, shit! There you go. Like I hate to be so blunt. I don't know the guy, and you know I'm not as well known in the DM community on Pojo as these two are. But this is CVH, and neither of those people were me. I mean, <laughs> to say definitively one way or another the game is coming back when we haven't heard anything from Wizards, and the yeah. most we have to go on we know is a TV, a show's TV coming, show yeah. coming back. We know a TV show is coming back, and we know Japan's going to do something with its meta eventually. Yeah. No, I don't and, know. But that. when we have, I think they already did the new set. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, okay. but Japan when that's all something. the evidence we have without an official announcement, that's not a guarantee that the game's yeah. coming back. You can't make that conclusion. So that was that was the first thing he he basically said DM coming back is clear so that was the first statement and then talking about I guess how a forty card card limit like was put in place to attack control 
to make the game more aggressive because I guess control here in America was ruining the game and that's the reason Duel Masters went downhill. That's Which pretty much how my I point read. was, you know, when control was considered one of the best decks, how the attendance was higher than it ever was, you know, it just went down from there. Yeah. As soon as the game became more aggressive with Bomb Bazaar, we had an 80 person nationals and no one cared. <laughs> and and take note, like what you, you said this earlier when we were just bantering, but control, when we say control, there are hundreds Numerous. of ways to build control. Yeah, and even though Water Dark Fire was the more mainstream and it won the event, like the top four was that, a rush deck, um, some force of control on something else. And the 1400 division, like I think Water and Nature Aggro won it. And yeah. like there was a it two sieve control deck that was teched out. I think it was Sean McCabe, or Sean McKay, what, how you say his name? Sure, names, yeah. I don't know. And then like random other people. But it was all different decks, you know, it was more diverse than the seven Bombazars yeah. and one Bombazars. I mean, just, just, yeah. look at, just look at Carl's videos, we've seen Water Dark Nature control, we've seen Fire Dark Nature control. And, and pre Bombazar, I have no doubt that any of the decks we featured so far could very well top a major event. Yeah, you know. And that, yeah, let's let's just get on the topic of Bombazar now because I've got it. Here we go. On the sheet. So <laughs> we've entered the Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> Bombazar, it it's broken. Anyone who can't see that is uh, you, what, how? a tool. I, <laughs> a, a tool. All right, <laughs> fair enough. But Bombazar, basically, you said it best. Bombazar, you summon it. Your opponent can't do anything at this point. They are com they put their cards down and they stop playing. And they the just game, hope they have enough to win. The game is those. over. No matter what, mm -hmm. in two turns. There's no way to get around it. And technically one turn because your opponent doesn't get one so they yeah. can't play again. And a it. card like that in, in a game like this is going to do a lot of damage. Take take a look at the aggro decks that I guess top that last nationals or whatever. Yeah. Con <laughs> what was it? It was like seven of them se were yeah. were bombs. Well, one of them wasn't even bombs. I was like nature they, light splash of well, two bombs. Well, I have no doubt they okay. only won at least half the matches because of no. those bombazars. No, there was a control because the finals. Oh, yeah, was there was ben one control yeah. versus the control. That yeah. was the final. It was and a the water control, dark fire control. For lack of a better word, the control like got his shit pushed in in under ten minutes. It was like one sided. That was it. Did you see the second game though? I sat and watched it. I watched. He it summoned as as I blockers. He had answers to the entire field that Bombazar kept putting out. Gonta got summoned. He summoned Thrashcrawler. Turns later, he was able to destroy Gonta. Controls were wanting Blizzard of Spears at that point because I guess that Bombazar one was, was so. That one was a very teched out control yeah. deck. It was strange. But it it he had his field cleared. He had him down to four shields. I guess he attacked early. He summons Bombazar and swaps in a Scarlet Sky Terror, eliminating all the blockers. The kid put his hand down and basically had to sit behind his shields and hope he had something. Bombs are double broke, nothing. Summon Twin Cannon, Bombs are swings, Twin Cannon won. And for as but, much as I think the control deck could have been built better, the guy was obviously a good player to make it through eight rounds of Swiss and top eight against Bombazar, top four against Bombazar, make it to the finals, and to lose like that is yeah. it's not skillful at all. He's playing good the entire game. Exactly. He didn't deserve it. And Bombazar yeah. comes in and basically says, I mean, they're going to win or not, you don't have a choice in this matter. A card like that yeah. is, you know, and is reason, unbalanced. It's, and the reason the other guy made the finals is because he had them deck that was the most consistent and playing Bombazar first the most. You know, you well, play Bombazar first, you win. That's it. Yeah. That's how he got to the finals. Part of what makes Bombazar so broke, though, and I think, you know, well, for comparison purposes, let's take a look at Twin Cannon Sky Terror. Sure. Twin Cannon <laughs> is, <laughs> is Bombazar without the extra turn effect. Mm -hmm. For all intents and purposes, totally and I sure. think that specifically is what makes Bombazar so dangerous, is being able to take that second turn, right after the one you put Bombi on the field. Yeah, well, the yeah. Game. that's the game. Yeah. That's that's you know. it. And, <laughs> but that means it ends the game. You know, if you don't, exactly. you lose it. The you game is over. Either you win or you lose. Yeah. You're either gonna beat them in those two turns, or you're not. You're gonna lose. That's but it. your opponent can't is... outplay you. It can't yeah, respond exactly. to that play. Like if you play twin cannon and break two shields, your opponent has at least one turn. To play an answer to that, it has a chance to no. outplay you out of that twin cannon. You can no. tear pit, you can Kirill, whatever. Right. Something I'm already thinking we're going to hear from people is, you know, well, maybe you should set up your shields. A game shouldn't be like that. Like we were talking about, uh, we talked about miraculous, miraculous truce and holy all and holy all. How you would have to stack those to the shields when you have to build a deck dedicated to that to combat something. You're going to lose to everything zero. else. Yeah. <laughs> if anything else gets played, you're going to lose to that. It's basically. Two decks in a format, and then someone runs something else still, random. Like if you do build a deck based around that, it doesn't make sense. You have to have at least three Oz and Shields to guarantee a game against Bomb because they can just break to it once, and then you can take the other turn they and win. Can take the second turn and if, win. Like, or they could just break the truce early if they know you said it. So Bombazar is still going to go if they run the if they run the consistent one, the Ben one to win. 
Bombazar is going to go off a lot more than you're going to get either three Oz or yeah. the truce they don't know about. Yeah. So it's still going to lose most of the time, probably. Yeah, and it's not like we're not like a good Bombie player if you set truce. It's like, oh, I set truce, I'm going to win now. No, a good Bombie player is going to like not play Bombazar and summon creatures and try to break that truce before they summon Bombazar. They, they're they going to be able to play around it. It's aggro. They're yeah, and you have, run four truces. To blockers yeah, you run four truce, four all, and four nexus. Well, at that point, your hand's going to suck 90% of the time, yeah. and you, they can just rush you. <laughs> that's that's 12 cards you got to dedicate to... And then emeralds, probably, to, which don't do much. Yes, yeah, to know. nature light, and then if you want to run water for draw, like you're not going to have a lot of room left in that deck to, say, put a control together around it. It's not or put gonna, any way to win in that yeah. deck besides it's, making them lose. It's going to be... It's, no. yeah. You can swap out their bomb and then hope they get a truce. That's it. When That's a, how you win. When, <laughs> when a deck like that takes over, tier zero is we call it in Yu-Gi-Oh. When a tier zero deck takes over and you have to build a deck dedicated to beating that in order to play this game, if you don't play that tier zero deck, that it's bad for a format and that it turns people off from it. That why do I want to play one of two decks in a game? And it's not even like that. It's just that Bombazar is not a whole lot of skill in that matchup. It's whoever yeah, drops it works. first. Yeah. yeah. And the anti-meta deck that has to beat it is the one that it's not even focused on beating it. It's focused on making it beat itself before it can beat you. Yeah. Which sucks. <laughs> Swap in your Bombazar at that point, and now you have it's just it's yeah. it's basically it, in Bombazar. It's, like it's Bombaz <laughs> It's Bombazar. Uh, that's it. The, versus itself. Yeah. It's not Duel Masters anymore. It's Bombazar, and it's. I say we ran it about that for a solid yeah. ten minutes. Was, it's like playing FTKs in Yu-Gi-Oh. No one wants to play the game by themselves. Those are first turn yeah. kills for those. First turn kill, know. like you know, frog. Were you ra you weren't around for that? I know about no. it. I'd rather play against I'd rather play against any first turn killer in Yu Gi Oh than play against Bombazar because <laughs> no because you can you can respond on your first there's turn. Hand you can effects, yeah. Effect Baylor. Yeah. Oh, Shadow Priest is OTK. Effect Baylor. Yeah, but that wasn't around at the same time. There's nothing like, like that in Duel Masters. You have to yeah. sit behind shields, which yeah, half the time is going to be luck, and that's that's what and which ninety percent of the time aren't going to be enough to stop any Bombazar. But <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to, I guess, shields, like, you know, people are going to say, like, shields involve a little bit of luck. Well, yeah, it's what kind of makes the game a little more interesting mm -hmm. than it would otherwise. Instead of saying, you know, if I could set up control on somebody and control the board until I have enough to swing for game, you know, they'll still be sitting behind those shield triggers. That's what makes me have to wait and think, and I have to either drop Bomidius or Cryptic Totem in order to swing through safe. If I wanted to be aggressive, then those shield triggers are going to... If if he has them, then they're going to do something to him, and it just kind of adds that little bit of balance to the game otherwise. And Bombazar just kind of shits all over that. So whether it's luck or not... If... Yeah, it forces you to play better when you have shields in the game, because you have to be prepared yeah. for anything. You want to attack, then you have to be prepared for anything they for, can do. For the worst case repercussion. Because you, you can give them a surfer if they don't need it. You can give them an in-hand lost soul when you're sitting on like six cards. You just gave them an out to whatever. Yeah. Worst case. <sighs> but... <laughs> so that was a. Uh... All right, we we got on the tangent of Bombazar. Yeah. So that was fun. Going back to Pojo, I think we'll be like in between Pojo a little bit, and I've got a lot of stuff here. So like back in the day. Stuff that I guess we can look forward to, and if we don't get to it, someone comment and tell me that I didn't get to it. But uh, <laughs> these notes are bad. There's Venus. I think what you should do is like in the description, put the time. So they can like scroll through the video. If they want to hear about a certain topic, they can click to that time. Oh, see, it's coming up with ideas on camera. That's no. damn right. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All, All right. right. Put a link in there to CBH bringing up that idea. So if you just watched that and you didn't actually want to hear it, look down in the description. <laughs> <laughs> Slap yourself in the face a little bit. If you think Bombazar gotcha. is the best thing to happen to this game, you can go ahead and skip to the next topic. <laughs> Too late now. They already fucking heard about it. <laughs> CBH, a family man. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I know there's okay. so many, like... Uh, another thing. All right. It, it, when it. people need to, I mm -hmm. guess, bet... All right, if you have an opinion, state your opinion. We're going to listen to it. I mean, we're going to read it, obviously. It's the internet. Because we have nothing better to do. If you have to back your opinion with, say, all right, I'm a good player, too, and... and wait, I'm a good control player, too, and one of the best decks on KP is made by me. You had to back up your opinions with with that like that that doesn't make any. You sound like a child. Like you're you're so insecure and immature in your own <laughs> in your own I guess opinions that you have to back it up with something as as little as that. That yeah. just that doesn't make sense I mean, on the internet. I don't. Well, know. Probably gonna, you're, uh, mm, 
All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Forget it. I didn't say anything. I, I just don't. I just. Puberty. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Gork, you're morbidly obese. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> At least I got a face full of facial hair, and my voice is pretty and deep. Right. I got that radio ready voice. All right. You know what I'm saying, baby? It's like you ate a guy with a deep voice. Hey, man. You know what? He was delicious. All right. I did agree with this, though. DM is not about control versus power and speed. It was never about that. I mean, it's obviously about Dex versus Dex. But, but then when you say, like... But it's all about yeah. synergy, and that's what I've been saying yeah. from the beginning, mm. that you have to build something that's going to work with it. So you can't just... I mean, yeah. obviously, the one of everything is kind of an exception. Because, yeah, but like, that, that's that not way. something I would play in a major event. But, that's just yeah, funny because would, you can't... <laughs> that's funny for the exact reason other decks aren't yeah. good, because you have to be inconsistent with you it. Can't. It has to do whatever the fuck yeah. If I pull out a pile of cards... And I play, like, me versus CBH. We're and it's both, gonna it's gonna be hilarious. We both know how the game works. If I pull out a pile of cards, and he plays a control deck, I guarantee he's gonna win 99 out of 100 times. That one offset being the time that I might actually draw something decent. But the control deck is just set up to do the same thing consistently, 9 out of 10 times. And one of what, everything can beat control sometimes, yeah. but it still can't even go, like... Yeah. It can't go 40-60 with control, and that's using, like, the best cards from each civilization. So, you know, because it just proves the point that decks have to have, a like, a purpose in mind and consistent card ratios, which are not 1, 1, 1, 1, <laughs> 48 different things. It's not just things. splashing engines together. It's building something that's going to get you consistent results. But it's fun as shit, and, and that, that's, build a, that's, not, that's not something that's unique yeah. to DM, though. That's something that you yeah. see across the board in TCGs. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not, I, I don't play Magic the Gathering at all, but I know, uh, oh god. You run four of major cards, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you yeah. just... Yeah, in Magic the Gathering, I know one of the major decks right now is, uh, some, it's like Red Wolf Run something like that. I don't know what it's actually called. I don't think it's, it's called that. Wolf Run something, I don't know. Whatever. Wolf Run Ramp. Alright. <laughs> and the reason that deck works is because it's so consistent. That's why you see it in all the major events. That's why you see plants everywhere in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, it is. Because it's the most consistent deck out there. And that's what you. That's why you actually get to see diversity in DM, though, is because you can build a lot of different yeah, decks a lot of consistently. Things can be consistent. yeah. Look at why Starnoid. Yes. Starnoid <laughs> hit board by turn six, and I think every one of those games you guys recorded. Yeah, we recorded yeah, a everybody. lot of them, and Starnoid yeah. hits board at least every game, whether it does work or not. It hits board. That one game, so. uh, what was it? Survivors got it down to zero shields, and Spencer was playing Starnoid and, and got five two five shields. <laughs> yeah, got back. To I it. mean, if he really wanted, to, he probably could have won earlier, but it's cool. Yeah. Nonetheless, that it can come back. <laughs> yeah, going back to Spencer not, Swan. Not talking about misplays. Wow, the man. hell, man, Gorby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could talk about your misplays. We could talk about we my could. misplays. You're I'm lucky terrible at this game. He's really lucky those videos got deleted, man. Yeah. Well, Carl and I have some videos. Yeah, we actually have a video. No one wants to see uh, that. Aggro versus aggro. But, I guess to put it in that perspective, that, like what you're talking about is... Yeah, man. We made the comment <laughs> that, I mean, there are easily 50 to 100 decks. I mean, there's, there's a lot of decks that can compete on a competitive level and do work. Well, that's a big statement to make. I mean, like, different versions of different decks, of course. You yeah, know, but I, I'm just saying, like, Starnoid, yeah. I could see it top 80. Yeah. I could see it doing very well. And if it plays against aggros the entire way up, maybe winning. Maybe, if they don't <laughs> run Bombazar, because then yeah. it will lose. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, take note, we haven't posted the video yet, but it played against Control. And then it lost. Control had the hand discard. So, in an aggro deck, and your Starnoid deck like that, you just didn't have the cards to come back from something like Side that. Side note, I fixed that problem because I decided I'm taking out Merfolks and something else for three streams, which will be more consistent draw and should yeah. help that problem more. Playtesting is important, people, <laughs> even when the game is dead. <laughs> but I guess the state, there's, there's a lot of good decks out there that can compete on a tournament level, and they're all, you just have to build them to compete against whatever meta you're in at that time. Like, uh, Rush got really big here for a oh, while. Yeah. And between, it was right, right, right before of you. Right, right before <laughs> Stompatrons dropped for us and Control got really big. No, because Stompatrons helped Rush because of Power Fighter. Well, then maybe it was right, maybe it was during Stompatrons then. Yeah. But I don't know. Rush got really, really big and really, really good. Whereas... Everyone realized, like, yeah. they call it Suicide Rush here where you only ran two mana, one mana cards except for Power Fighter and Dismantler. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much how all Rush decks, more or less, are built today. Yeah. But there are differences, but they're small. Yeah, because we got more cards. Yeah. But 
Rush was really, really good. And then a couple sets later, Control, uh, probably when Clamp came out, Control really just took off and now had Rush to compete with and Control just kind of took that gauntlet back. Now Control was the big day. Water Dark Fire or Water Dark Nature, but I mean Water and Dark mainly. Water was your draw engine, Darkness was your discard, and your other sit was dedicated to whatever you needed to deal with. And the Fire one was really big because now a yeah. deck like that had answers to the weenies that yeah. And but, like when Rush first got big here, I didn't know how to beat it. Like we didn't build control as good as we build them now, so I wasn't running Burst Shot. Yeah, I wasn't running Emerald. I mean, I mean maybe he was running Emerald, but I wasn't running as consistent of a deck versus Rush as I could have. You know? And the Rushes weren't built optimally too. They ran like Jewel Spider. Yeah, we, we played. We played. Yeah, it was just random. It was it was different back then, but the same basic idea behind it is we didn't have answers for it and. Then, as as the game progressed, we started coming up with, hey, this is how you deal with this, and we built mm -hmm. decks to compete with that meta, and then, I, I mean, that's the definition of meta. We built control to deal with Rush, and then people had to start building controls to deal with control. Rush falls off the map for a little while. You still see a few every now and then, but... Yeah, we in our shop had about 12 to 20 people, so we always had a solid array of, like, different decks to play against, and how we had to adapt, which was cool. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we just define meta for you guys, so there you go. But, um, alright, so, <laughs> just to state, uh, oh god, fruit flies. This is my kitchen, <laughs> but there aren't that many fruit flies. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to say, we're, I'm coming back, this is another post by Nerefim. Oh my god. Nerefim, I'm, we're not attacking you, but you've given us a lot to talk about. Like, you brought up ideas that, I mean, me and CBH were going to... Did subscribe to you? I have no idea. Hope you are, man. <laughs> but you should subscribe. <laughs> you've given us ideas to talk about, and we're not attacking you, but we're talking about our opinions of your opinions. And it's, I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. basically what we're getting at. We're not attacking you by any means, so don't feel like we're we're coming out at you. We're we're not trying to do that by any means. And I guess stating that what forty minutes into this isn't helping too much. Well, forty minutes before. into this. Holy yeah. shit. We're half an hour. Wow. Like, uh, we're we're it's like yeah. eleven thirty at night right now, so excuse us if we say anything that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the decision regarding gameplay wasn't clearly up to the people in charge, so it obviously wasn't the players. Yes, there were lots of reasons that ended DM, but bad game balance was one of them too. Of course, there were a lot of factors that came to finish off. I guess DM. Like I stated, I still think it, the game balance was fine before Bombazar. Yeah, yeah uh, totally yes. fine. Yes. Absolutely, completely fine. Yes. You can You've seen on the duel videos cannot. all the different decks we've used and how they've competed, and they hold their own against other decks. Maybe a ban limit limit list. Like you want to limit Cranium Clamp, fine. No one's gonna get too angry about that. Maybe yeah. like little things like that, but overall, fine. I mean, even without Bomba, you'd still see, you know. Nature, Actually, water, fire, things. aggro. Yeah, no, it's my favorite deck type. Yeah. And other aggros too, like just the nature light thing with Luki Alex. Mm -hmm. That's intense. Yeah. It has a great matchup versus control, because they're not prepared for it. It doesn't have that weenie removal. It yeah. has to deal with it either pit or spot removal, it's but pretty it's just much, coming back. Like, look so. at Carl's build. It's pretty much what top eight nationals minus the random splash of Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Which is, you know... That's right, one of those did. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Seven Bombazars, yeah. one of them tried to pretend it was something else. But it had Bombazars You can Bombazar see through that shit. Yeah. You know what one half this matches by Bombazar. <laughs> you can't pretend it didn't. Of course. <laughs> Techno Totem. Tackle block. Bombazar. What the fuck is Luke going to do when your opponent plays Bombazar? No, you gotta swap that out. Bring in your own Bombazar. <laughs> <laughs> you mad, bro. But, yeah. Okay, so the game obviously had its faults. Mm. Get back to that. We, we're going to lose you guys on tangents a lot. That's why we have the thing at the bottom so you can click yeah. the different segments. Yeah. <laughs> just get off of all of these sorts of tangents. But it's a good idea though. The things that ended DM, I'm going to try to hit most of them that are in my head right now. But DM was, in my opinion, from what it looks like, it looks like it was brought to America as its own game. I mean, to begin with. But Wizards of the Coast picked it up in order to get new players, because Magic the Gathering was not pulling in new players. It had its old crowd, and it had, it, I mean, it just... And by old, we mean old. There's a lot it, of old it, guys. It just marketed to people 20 plus, like, because yeah. it was, it's an intelligent game. It takes a lot of thought. There's a lot of reading. There's a lot of abilities. There's just a lot that goes into that game, and children aren't going to get into that. The 5 plus to 16 aren't going to get into that. They don't 
enjoy that kind of stuff, I guess. It's not fun for them. But, <laughs> you guys <laughs> are. <laughs> Oh, we're playing chest and hands. That's the hand blows. Well, <laughs> you're talking. We're just yeah. kind of. But gonna DM say was shit. brought here to get new players into their product to eventually, as they grow older, leave DM behind, see it as more of a kid's game. Because I go to their website. On it, they made it look like a. For, four kids marketed two children. Clearly, on they there. overestimated our maturity because yeah. we stick with it. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> but. I, I, and also, it kind of backfired. I know, like a lot of people got into Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, yeah, um, like everyone we just, I know. We just went in different yeah. directions after it left. But it was marketed to children so that when they got older, they would get into Magic, mm -hmm. which they dubbed as more of the in quotes. I don't know how many of you went to 2006 quotes. Continentals, but we got there, and like for an entry prize, we got <laughs> they gave us a Magic, magic starter, starter deck. It was me, Carl, and Spencer in the hotel room, just like. What are we gonna the do? The hell is this? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Who's that? Where's yeah. my product? I know, right? Where are my booster packs? <laughs> did we get any packs? Maybe. No, we got that neat little continental bag though. We but did. Mine's still in. Uh, mine is okay. Condition. It's not in good condition, yeah. but you're it's missing okay. the inside. <laughs> I'm missing the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, it was really that. That was a downfall already. They we'll were talk just, about they were what they could have done for prize support later. Yeah. They just set it up to fail, <laughs> and that's it. Prize support. Okay, here we go. DM did not provide us with good price support. Of course they gave us the promos, but on, on top of that, it's not like we ever saw anything, like, we never saw mats. The we, people in Yu-Gi-Oh! who complain about price support don't know how lucky they are that they have a company yeah. to kind of care. Well, think about you top eight, you get a cool looking binder, a cool looking mat, or an ugly mat, it's but it's worth still a money. Mat. Yeah, you can, and regardless, yeah. it's worth money, whether you want to keep it or not. I mean, I know people in, that we run in the games don't want people to get into the game just to make money off the game, because that's what they're trying to do, but you gotta know that you have to have something to look forward to when you top eight a big event, and it's gotta, you know, do something for you. You gotta, like, win a prize card that you can trade off for profit or something. Yeah. You know, well, no that's, one's gonna that's play an them. Yeah. Another thing Dual Masters did, cards were never worth that much money. Which is good. Keep it that way. Yeah, keep it that way, but that's something you want the staples to either be hard to get mm -mm. or worth a little bit of money. Shit. That's what brings that's that's what brings such a big market to Yu-Gi-Oh though. I'm not trying opinion. to uh, you I mean have, I would disagree with keep, that. Keep it like magic, obviously, but don't Yu-Gi-Oh now actually everything is cheap besides the two like two things and exactly. the reprints are what's worth money. Make reprints of popular cards. Like, you have the people who just want to play good and they don't want to spend a lot of money, fine. Spend, like, $5 on a place at Aqua Hulkus. But if you want to be, like, that guy, go ahead and spend, like, $20 a piece to get the secret rare Hulkus that looks sweet. That's what I would do. Like, you know there's people out there that yeah. there's a market for that. Well, I might be that market right. for that, but you don't no, want to make little I, kids spend that much to be good. I'm not saying make it as expensive as Yu-Gi-Oh! was, but take a look. No card in Duel Masters was ever worth more than $50. As it kind of should be. Which is what I want it to be. Yeah. But make the big power cards like that worth that fifty dollar range. Well, they make were. People have to spend a little money. For they that. were just not like yeah. the big control cards, like you know. But game changer. But like they made the finishers, like yeah. you know. It wasn't like that at the end, though. Is what I'm getting at. That's that, that price thing kind of fell off the map as people no. started falling away from Duel Masters. I mean, well, if so. you have no people to buy the cards, you have yeah. no. But they didn't fall away because the prices were too low. They might have fallen away because you needed Bombazars to win, and they were like forty apiece. And soul swaps were like ten, fifteen a piece. Yeah, and hard as hell to find for no reason. Because <laughs> Carl's over there hoarding them. Two places, ladies and gentlemen. Plus one. Spencer was like, "Man, I wish Carl would give me one of his play sets of swaps so I could play Bombazar and not lose to you all's Bombazar." <laughs> <laughs> nah. But yeah, it was just it was it really was when Bombazar came out that it started to fall off. The game became unbalanced. People, like you said, the tournament. Oh, in one year. One year, going from, what was the, it was 2005 it was like, to 2006. Yeah, it was like 200 people in the 15-up division alone, and the 14 mm -hmm. division had, like, a, you know, it was pretty competitive. I don't know how many people yeah, it was. I wasn't exactly there. Over, but I'm sure it was enough. More, probably more than however our, and all I, I seem divisions. to remember they had decent, like, coverage on the site, too. Like, they cared mm -hmm. back then. They had pictures, yeah. they had matches, they had, like, interviews, maybe not that, but, you know. They, yeah, they posted. We, we knew what was going on by the Basically, it looked more like Konami's site did. And yeah. the second one, they had feature matches, didn't even post them. Yep. And Carl got a feature match, I got right? a feature match. Thank he got God. 13th or 11th. 11th. Carl Mashoto, 11th place nationals. One of the biggest disappointment in places you could get. <laughs> Beat Tom Rogers, though. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> sure did. Mm. Suck it, Tom. With a horrible rush deck. <laughs> Tom. I won't even go into it. Tom Rogers is a nice guy. I personally think he's good, and I've gotten to be friends with him over the years. He's not a complete <laughs> asshole. All right. All right. All right. Oh my. He's a nice you're a dick. Bro. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, Warby's over there weak. <laughs> More on that later. Yeah. Uh, Alright. CVH said. Oh boy. Look at Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean sure the game will continue to go strong format after format because the premier events, decent prize support, and a company that cares a lot more than Wizards did for us. That's another thing. Wizards didn't care. They wanted to push magic, so they stopped supporting Dual Magic. But we've already talked really about how that continue. Happened. But there's a general disdain for aggressive formats. People recognize that piloting decks like Lightsworn, Seeker Cat, which are two Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh terms, they don't take a lot of skill. They're, just, they're you know, autopilot know. decks. Yeah. But still, they're not even as bad as Bombazar yeah. was here. Yeah. It, it takes a lot less board. skill you can without cost. than the days of PC Monarch and Teledad. Which, which were skillful formats were skillful that were, you know, they were based around card advantage. For Perfect Circle Monarch, it was based around card advantage. And for Teledad, it was based around thinking you couldn't just play Bombazar and win. If you played Dark Armed and knew you were walking into a trap, then your opponent could counter push and win. That's yeah. how it was. Mm -hmm. You know, you could but, think a little bit. It was very skillful. But thinking ahead, playing heavy. conservatively, <laughs> and planning money how to heavy. get the most advantage out of every play are the ways to win in the most borrow. skillful formats. And that's that's really it. That's I to the that I was gonna state this eventually in this video, but that's Duel Masters. Thinking turn by turn, trying to think a few turns ahead, know what you're playing, it's but making the now. best oh, possible that's... play every turn to set you up in the best position for your next play and then your opponent has an answer to that you come up with an answer to that it's it's back and forth it's a chess game and this is what Nerfim had to say to that oh god <laughs> <laughs> what people want and what is right later. is is very often not the same thing can uh, we stop right there okay <laughs> what relevance does that bring to the argument that statement has absolutely nothing to do with what we are talking about. He's just getting philosophical. It's it's a horrible segue into a topic that really he has no business talking about because I'm almost positive he's never played the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! at a competitive level before. Which we all have. And, and yeah. really here we're just talking about our opinions and he's, to what it feels like, coming at us on our opinions. Trying to tell us that we're wrong, he's right. I feel and like so, we should cut that all out. Maybe. I just want to just like go and at him. No, oh, all right. right. <laughs> we're not. We're not attacking him. But the thing is, I f I feel attacked. I feel like he's attacking us. I don't. If if yeah. you're not, please let us know. But he said, I think bringing Yu-Gi-Oh into this is false, misleading argument. What I don't know. We just compared the idea that you want to play skillful decks in a game. Yeah. And you don't want something that's just going to. More or less, Bombas are win and the ban every list, single time. The ban list that they have makes deck skillful. Like the ban list is yeah. geared towards competitive players, and that game is successful. They have like five hundred people plus for every YCS they have. Regionals oh, have yeah. like what one regionals at least in this area average around two hundred players. Yeah, and like even in the lower areas like Roanoke, they had like fifty to hundred, exactly, which was the size of our second nationals. <laughs> yeah. And he, he goes on to say, when that game is so notorious for not having any reasonable sense, a lot of redundancy, and no consistency, no consistency through the basics, etc. That's why the 2,000 people I met at Nationals in 2009 were all there, because the game didn't make any sense, right? Yeah. That's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and I think, we brought this up before we started recording, I think what he was referencing there, and this is a Yu-Gi-Oh! mechanic that some of you guys may or may not be familiar with, is missing the timing. Which is a completely different argument in and of itself. But cards but should to, do what but, they say they do. But to invalidate all that. to invalidate a game's relevancy in comparison to other games because of one mechanic is ridiculous. Yeah. Even the player base agrees that that's a stupid mechanic. But here's the thing. They still play. Yeah. And it's still a hugely successful game. Because they still, it's not like that's a factor of how much they don't care. It's not like they're not fixing that, so they're not fixing yeah. anything. Yeah. If there's a deck that people really hate and want to see gone... They're going to make it worse. Exactly. You know, they're going to make it... Gonna look, at, look at the end of Teledad format. People were complaining about Teledad. Yeah. You know, it costs a lot of money, and it's too consistent, and it's tier zero, and blah, 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 which that's an entirely different debate but in and of itself. In but, like Bombazar was but still in they, money. But they changed the deck, the format, completely. Yeah. 
Teledad was no longer a viable deck. They put Emergency Teleport to one. They put Dark Arm Dragon to one. They put Mally to two. They put... I mean, it was just... I mean, the card was still good by himself, <laughs> exactly. but it had to find other ways to adapt. And it had to be, it had to be less fast-paced, and it had to just do other things. Well, you know? and, but, that, but, and that just changes the game to suit what the players want. And which is something I feel like, from hearing you guys talk, DM didn't really do for their player base. They just kind of yeah. like spat cards at you and say, all right, go play. Yeah, that was that yeah, that's that's how I felt. I was Staples like 12, stayed but... staples the from time. sets 1 yeah. to 12 when it ended. We That'd used be... the same staples. For and, Aqua Hulk is... In Yu-Gi-Oh, staples get yeah. rotated out. Monster, yeah. Monster Reborn was gone for three formats before we saw it again. Heavy Storm was gone for two formats. Yeah, we don't... And that's yeah, something no I think. <laughs> well, yeah. uh. and, that's, <laughs> and and Duel Masters, I think we we would be okay with that. I feel like some people are like, no, I don't want to ban list. But it wouldn't be bad for the game. You just you have to get used to the idea that things are going to change. You're not going to be able to do the same thing forever. It's not. Yeah, Japan has a ban list, and that's like the main thing from Japan I want to see incorporated here. Yeah, get rid of cards that break the game, like Bombazar. There's a card in Japan, a super Bolzard, I don't know, whatever. But it's 10 mana fire card, speed attacker, it's got like 12,000 power, plus power attacker, it's a triple breaker. It's 10 mana. Soul Swap! Yeah. Yay! Coco Lubia. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's Soul Swap, but just just make it cheap, and then it does something else ridiculous, I'll, I'll find it, but it's like Bolmidia Soul Fire or something or another, but... I mean, it's it's absolutely ability, broken. Yeah. Play a billion degree dragon and play super sonic it's big. pack. It's like a twin cannon, but just so much better. Oh yeah, and when it breaks shields, it goes straight to the grave. Okay, that's broken. Yeah. Now it's broken. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, that's if, why. It can be, if it can be beat by an emerald, it's, it's not broken. But yeah, it does that. Does that Bom Bomidia, cool. sapphire, something or another. But triple breaker, shields go straight to the graveyard. Speed attacker, it's effing huge. And it's yeah. only 10 mana. And the reason I say cards yeah. like this are more damaging in Duel Masters than they would be in Yu-Gi-Oh! is because of the no-trap thing. Which I love about Duel Masters, it sets it apart, but you gotta know if you create a really broken-ass creature like Bombazar or that thing, opponent's not gonna be able to deal yeah. with it when they... So it becomes sell. substantially worse than it would be in any other game. Yeah. yeah. Or, you yeah. can't deal with it on your opponent's turn. Yeah. Yeah. You have it's to... not like they summon it and you can bottomless trap holy. Every card in the game... And that's this, again why I compare it to chess. You have to set yourself up to not get hit yeah. by these situations coming on. But you then have to when set you make up to then you Bombazar be able to play just completely game. shits all over that idea and says, oh, well, fuck the rules. But when you start Bombazar. playing chess with someone who's playing with all queens and you're just playing with a regular chess board, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of a disadvantage. I'm just saying. <laughs> a lot unless, of you flip the table, <laughs> unless you flip the table by soul swapping their Bombazar out first. <laughs> soul oh, swap shit, their king to the front, take them out with the pawn. Let's go. Oh, good point. That's how you win in chess. <laughs> Soul swap. <laughs> exactly. uh, next time I play chess, I'm just gonna put that on the board. And be like, get that king out there. <laughs> Give me that. You want to go ahead and tip it over? Are we ever gonna need this space card? I Eventually. don't. We're. Uh, if anything else, I hope you're liking our backdrop, YouTube. It's, I don't know what it is yet, but I think it should be <laughs> a picture of Morbi and a sombrero at Plaza Azteca two years ago at my birthday dinner. <laughs> That's a good picture. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll flash it while we're, we're talking about <laughs> Okay, wow. sweet. There's the picture. Right. Isn't he so heavy, folks? <laughs> Look at him. He's excited. Look at him. He's making the face now. Look at him. <laughs> oh, God. All right. We're having fun, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. We're having fun. We, we love you, Darren. serious as we're trying to make this. Yeah, I, I, 45 I minutes later, yeah. can we not talk about him anymore? Yeah, I don't... Well, <laughs> I mean, he gave us a lot of things to talk yeah, about, Yeah, he though. just basically... He threw like what me and CVH were gonna talk about initially, and he's kind of all into one giant. Post. He, and he just kind of like <laughs> he just kind of threw it at us, and like now we're putting it on the ground, I guess. We're cleaning yeah, it up. Pants. I don't whatever. Oh, uh, some sort of reference that'll make sense. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm done with posing that. You guys said stuff, but uh, that's, 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 yeah. what do I have? He all has right. a notepad with ideas. That's what he does in college. <laughs> All right, so that's what I do. Let's see, what do we talk, talk about? Yeah, but it's relevant to your classes. <laughs> um, hmm. I actually have something I'd like to talk about. Go for it. Uh, you know, being new to this game like I am, you know, I don't have nearly as much experience as these two. I mean, he's not that new yeah. for real. Well, I mean, I didn't start playing it 
you know, even casually until I met Carl. And yeah, the but game the thing is, by then. yeah, but the thing yeah. is, like, you've played longer than the game like lasted in English, so you're about <laughs> as experienced as anyone was back then. You know, Maybe. but we, that's how we didn't thought. play as consistently as we did. Yeah. I don't think he's been playing every weekend for the past yeah. two years. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's embarrassing but, you too. <laughs> regardless, <laughs> regardless, we I, had a good damn time. We I were can. twelve. I was twelve. He was like fifteen. He has no excuse. <laughs> I, I, I had fun. I'd like yeah. to talk about Soul Swap. All right, okay. let's go. Let's get into Soul Swap. What do you want to say? Um, I Not just I feel like talking about the, you know we were talking about the Japanese ban list earlier. Soul Swap is on that list. Yeah, it's banned. You bring that list up. Yeah. I'd like to insult whoever did that. In very. I think that's terms. for good reason though. No, that's smart. Fuck you because guys, man. that's wrong. Soul Swap. Soul Swap is I I wouldn't say it's go. on par with Bombazar and Brokeness, but it is oh. definitely a broken card. Because it turns any card that would be four mana or higher into a three mana card. And not only is that good for offense, but it's good for defense. Yes. It's very good for defense. Because you can swap out a threat that's already on the board, put it back into their mana zone. Or a threat that, that you know they're going to swap in, swap it out. You know, you know, put that Hulk as into mana, and then bring out a twin cannon and pit the thing away. You know, assuming you have nine That's mana. Kind of assuming you have nine mana. Why to would burn. you even do that? Regardless, I don't care. <laughs> like, it's just ever. it's a scenario. You know, and counter I, argument. Those are the reasons I love it. People think Soul Swap they automatically associate it with Bombazar and like how good it made. Obviously, Bombazar would be kind of worse without mosquito. Swap. That's a fruit fly, actually. That's a mosquito. Oh, yes, it is. Not big I on don't malaria. live in the ghetto. I'm not big on malaria. <laughs> It's over there. All right. Anyway, Soul Swap I think required the most skill to use out of any card that was released in English. I think you know just for all the reasons you said that you hate it. I love it. You know. Well, well, I, I don't. I wouldn't say I hate it. I saying, like using. Saying the card. that it requires skill is not meaning that it's not broken. Yeah, because judgment, if, if you look at it, Solemn Judgment yeah. requires skill in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, and it's a great card. Exactly. No one. But it's still the it limited list. It. Yeah, and not many people were happy about that. I'm still not actually. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of. Anyway, like Soul Swap, when you look at it, the bare minimum, like if you run a deck that doesn't need it, like it's a minus one. Like you're wasting Soul Swap, and you're getting rid of something on your field to get something else on your field. Usually, that would, you know, you'd be losing advantage. There'd be no reason to do it. But if you play it smart, you'd be putting yourself in a better situation by doing it. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with your opponent. You're wasting your card, and you're just switching something. And hopefully, if you think correctly, you can switch something you can deal with. And, you know, it's just... It doesn't change the game by itself. Like, it changes the game when you use it with Bombazar, the game is over. But, like, by itself, it just helps you put yourself in a better situation, usually. It can you change know. the game in aggro decks. Yes, it does. It makes aggro yeah, good. Regardless of Bombazar or not. Well, I soul swap a twin right. cannon onto the board, and you're going to have to deal with that right then, or you will lose. Well, well most of the time. Like, a twin cannon yeah. doesn't win the game by itself. Bombazar does, which is why Bombazar yeah. was the problem and not swap. Yeah. Twin cannon is just a good finisher. Yeah, it's just big. But so there. would you argue that so if we get DM back in America and the Japanese ban list is implemented, would you try to make the argument that Soul Swap should come off the ban list? No. Soul Swap. All right, my opinion. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Earth power, guys. <laughs> all right. Soul Swap basically says I can run anything in a deck, and Soul Swap's gonna let me bring it out. Any creature, mind you, not spells, obviously, but. I want to run Fire Dark Water, for instance. If I want to run a light card, I just splash those light creatures in there, and it splash Soul Swap, and if I have a Soul Swap, I'm going to Soul Swap that light creature, and I don't necessarily need the mana. I can run one of anything, pretty much. If I want to run two Bomidius as a finisher in a deck that runs Nature Water, I can do it. Soul yeah, Swap but that's will let also, me bring that That's out. also super inconsistent, and you're going to be having dead cards yeah. in It's like, but, no one would do that. But Soul Swap creates that possibility, and then, and then go back to Bombazar. Splash Bombazar in anything that runs nature. Yeah, Bombazar is a problem there. Yeah, of no course. One, like today, but, no one would run nature light with four swaps and splash twin cannons, because it's not as game changing. Like, yeah, you haven't done of course. That. But, I would. but saying you would, because you're a boss, Corby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but Soul Swap gives you that that little bit of edge to run any Sorry. creature finisher a anything you want pretty much and and bring yeah, that to that bring nature. that to, bring that to life in whatever day and i just i don't like that idea behind it i mean i think soul swap's an amazing card and it definitely anything that runs nature is going to run soul swap because it just 
It, it can remove a threat on your opponent's Almost, team. you never say always. <laughs> but yeah, almost everything. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. But it, it can remove a threat on your opponent's field. It's better than a uh, Miraculous Snare, uh, in my opinion, just because it's three mana. Snare? snare. Send a creature yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah. your opponent's battlefield. To I mean, you, you have to run nature, I guess, yeah. Yeah. But that's I'm the thing. Some cards are going to be better than others. Well, Sky Sword's so better than Mystic Inscription. Well, yeah, but... So, <laughs> Aurora. <laughs> Muscle Charger, better than Aura Blast. Okay. <laughs> Check it out, YouTube. This... Aura Blast. Wow. Real talk. Way to replace a card. But, uh, <laughs> Soul Swap, three mana versus six for a natural snare. I'll, I mean, you're bringing another creature out, but when that's getting rid of your Bromidius and bringing a blocker out, I'll take that hit. Or, the thing, yeah, it's the, it's the good because it's versatile. Like, in that situation, yeah. personally, snare is obviously, you know, kind of better because you're losing a card, your opponent's losing a card, nothing else. In that situation you mentioned with Soul Swap, you're losing, losing, a, you're losing a card, they're not losing anything, they're just switching it out. But I'm saying but it's good because it's versatile yeah. and it can do that. Since you're running nature anyways, you run four swaps and it just it gives you that yeah, versatility. Yeah, you gotta think about it. But so, like, you know, so, in the English game right now, like I wouldn't argue that swap would be banned to create a balanced mm -hmm. format. Because it makes Edgar good and it makes like when I'm building a control deck, I think about alright, it has to beat Rush, it has to beat other control decks. And it has to be able to handle twin cannon as like a consistent threat because it's going to get twin cannon. Do I run emeralds? Do I have like they swap out, they use a swap, switch something out, bring out twin cannon, double break? I have Tajma or I have like a terror pit and shields. You know, I gotta have an answer. That's how you build controls to have answers for those cards that are really good. Yeah. And you know, without you know swap, aggro is still going to be good, but it's not going to be able to play like. Windax whenever it wants. If it puts it in mana, it might have to wait to see another one. You know, it's not going to have finishers whenever it wants. But, you know. Okay. The so I guess being, the overall no consensus about, about, th about this card is that it's good card design, but it makes... Well, when coupled with there. certain cards, it makes it makes them broken. Yeah, I think yeah. in the English game, no one would have ever complained about it if Bombas are not been released. Like, you know. Yeah. So you think it's just kind of the knee-jerk reaction then that it's on the ban list in the first place? I don't know how, well, the Japan, well, I don't okay. know how that meta evolved at all. So think about how good aggro is, even without Bombas are. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's yeah. it's very good. It can compete with control. It can compete with rush. Mm -hmm. It just can compete on that higher level. As it should be. And mm -hmm. it's aggressive, and it, it just really powerful. It works. Take Soul Swap out of that equation, you're now, you don't swap in those Twin Cannons, those Wind Axes, as consistently as you were. If you put something down in mana, it's gonna stay there. Pretty, unless you're running Thrash or something like that, but that's... Or Splash Zebra Fish. It, or Splash Zebra <laughs> Fish, but it's it's working backwards at that point. You're bringing it to the hand yeah. and you're gonna have to wait it takes another for another Soul step. Swap, summon Bronze Arm Trod, get that little bit of mana excel, and then for six mana, play the other well, Bronze Arm Trap plus Soul Swap, six mana. Play Bronze yeah. Arm Trap, play the Soul Swap. Now, for six mana, you, you're bringing out a Twin Cannon. But here's and the thing. plus mana. But here's the thing. Not taking the mana into account, because it could be anything. Like, the mana really doesn't make a huge difference. In my yeah. But the thing is, like, you just play two cards to play one Twin Cannon. Whereas if you play Twin Cannon from the hand, you play one card to play the Twin Cannon. But you also got plus mana with Bronze Arm Trap. Or say you're not using Bronze Arm Trap, say it's Hulkus. Hocus, yeah. draw, soul slot into... Well, that's because Hocus is a good card. That's not yeah. Hocus's fault. You could play Maverillon, fish, and swap out a twin cannon, which I'm sure people have done yeah, before. Yeah, but see, at that point, that that's when it is, that kind of minus one, but you're getting yeah. out your big creature. Yeah, but so Hocus replaces itself in the hand, you're not really losing too much at that point. That's called still that doesn't mean soul swap's broken, that just means just used with cards that are synergistic. Yeah. Is that a word? Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, but soul swap in general, it's just, it can apply itself to so many situations in a game. And I can see where in, a, in Japanese... You know, Hocus like, is really great because it replaces itself. You know, you never lose advantage while playing it. And it's running almost anything that runs water. But no one's when, really when about Soul Swap it. can set you up for victory, is a, a card that can set you up for game-winning scenarios as consistently as Soul Swap can, I can see why they banned it. I'm just... I mean, well, so I'm, not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying that it deserves to be banned. Right. But I can see why it got banned. Yeah, I'm sure and, they have different the, creatures that yeah. are really, really, really right, a combo yeah. with Soul Swap. Yeah, let me tell you... Where, where are you? Uh, I don't think it's going to... No. Alright. No. Read it to me in English. Has it been Stupid almost an hour? Website. No, we're edging we're on. Yeah, we're probably getting another like, 20 minutes. We can... God, but God, show me the ban list. Stupid. Oh, here we go. Show me okay. the ban list. Here we go. What else do we have to talk about? Where are you? A bunch. Really? Are we going to do like another video after this or what? Uh, no, we don't have to. I yeah, mean, no, until yeah. we have more to talk about. But I don't know how much you have on here. Mom, 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 mom. Where are you? Oh, here we are. All right. 
Here's my card on start page. page. And this this soul swap <laughs> would put in work here with this card. Ten mana. It's Bomidius Sapphire Dragon. I was right. Yeah. Um, ten mana. Eleven thousand power plus. It gets speed attacker. Power attacker plus three thousand. Triple breaker. And whenever this creature would break a shield, your opponent puts those shields into his graveyard instead. Soul swap that in. The opponent's going to crap themselves. Like it, it's just. <laughs> Obviously, for 10 mana, it's going to be a lot. You still have to have the 10 mana with the swap, but now you just summoned a big threat like that for 3 mana that's going to be attacking that turn. It's almost as bad as Bomb Czar. But, point. like, at that point, if you have 9 mana, you play swap. The other 7 mana, like, you can play some stuff, but it's probably not going to be as game-breaking as that Sapphire Dragon is, and there's yeah. really no reason to ban swap well, before you ban Sapphire Dragon. Or... Because if you want to play a deck around Sapphire yeah. Dragon, you just play Coco Loopy and shit, the thing's still going to be broken. You know, Swap didn't make it good. It's already a ridiculous yeah. card. Horribly designed, I might say. <laughs> like, yeah. really horrible. Is it an evolution or anything? No. It's fucking dumb. <laughs> it can be blocked. It can be blocked. And Swap it doesn't, doesn't take, make it unblockable. It doesn't take a second turn, either. And yeah. that's another thing Sam's about Bombazar. We've been talking about how much how bad Bombazar is. Bombazar kills itself if you summon another one. It destroys all of the creatures with 6,000 power, so like that was kind of their way of balancing that card, but it didn't really work out. How did that help at all? Like, how, why would you summon two? It didn't. Well, think about it. I It just creates an extra twin cannon. You're running four Balazar, four yeah. twin cannon, and you just have, instead of needing that just twin cannon, twin cannon yeah. you don't need yeah. the twin cannon anyway if you have, like, two other creatures. Yeah. That you but I'm saying you couldn't summon Bombazar one turn and then I summon think, it again. Yeah, the I think turn, the real reason so. they did that was because they didn't want people to go Cryptic Totem, then Bombazar, and win automatically. Because totems are ridiculous. Yeah. 6, yeah. That. True. But then you could always just summon Bombazar, swap in Cryptic, and then take your next turn. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It'd be inconsistent. You'd have it'd to have silly. swap. Yeah. Because otherwise... In 10 mana. <laughs> yeah, you would have to have 10 mana. <laughs> or two swaps. I'm just saying, the, the situation's there. So. I wouldn't even run it at that point. <laughs> I, that's why we don't run it. <laughs> I guess. But anyways. Soul Swap... I can see why they would ban it, just because of how consistent it is, but whatever. Um, let's see. We're getting towards the end of this YouTube, so kind of. <laughs> uh, I guess get uh, Mega Dark Shadow gave us a few questions when I asked for questions. He wanted us to talk about TCG versus OCG, which I mean we've hit on. Oh. A little Throughout, bit. I mean, yeah, it's pretty the, much. They yeah. have a ban list. They have a forty card deck limit. I mean, we've talked about the stuff. So. You gonna talk about playing at all? Like um, gameplay. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. here we only got to 12 sets, so I mean, it's really hard to compare our meta to theirs. But, I mean, from what I've seen, it's just, it's very aggressive. Just very, those are the decks that do well. And that's what the ban list kind of pushes it towards, too. So, because, I mean, they have a limited list, too. And a lot of the draw cards are on there. Aqua Hulkus is on there. Is Clamp banned? Yeah, Clamp is probably banned. Clamp is not it's called something else, I think. Let me. Nope. Well, that entire site is in Japanese that Carl's looking at. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Like, he's probably just looking at pictures and saying, oh. Yeah, I don't I'm, know what I'm that is. Just checking, I'm checking <laughs> the pictures. I think it's called Skeleton Vice or something. Skeleton Vice? Oh, God. Website. That's not a working. yes, I don't think. Yeah. Hold on. I'll check. Uh, uh, open up. Yeah, Skeleton Vice. Alright, yeah, Skeleton Vice banned, which is Crane and Clamp for us. So, but, um... <laughs> basically a lot of discard cards. It looks like just a lot of control stuff was limited because, again, the Japanese meta is trying to push their players in a more aggressive gameplay style. They want players... <laughs> the idea is that, look at control decks. They're going to hold you off, not attack, and just... In, in their opinion, make things boring until they're ready to swing for game. Control the field, make nothing happen, and or just have an answer for whatever happens. But yeah, but I don't. I don't see what's wrong with that. But no, there's, there's, nothing, there's wrong nothing wrong with it. But that's not, I guess, what they want. They want a more aggressive game, and that's what they kind of. That's why they get these towards. super psychic they, creatures. Yeah, they want players to be swinging at shields. They want shields to be activating. They want it to. They want things to be happening. They want all, at all times. Yeah. yeah, they want it to go back and forth as much. It's about, as what, it's about what's happening here. Yeah, not and here not because you can't see that. Because 
because they're not going to be it's looking about, It's it. about what's <laughs> happening on the battle zone and the mana zone more than what's actually happening in the hand, what yeah. you're holding on to, and what you're trying to... How you're trying to control your opponent. I mean, hand advantage is still important, so you can have, yeah. you know, a constant push, I guess, in aggro and stuff. So, But, but yeah. they want to push it in that more aggressive way to where, you know, you kind of have to attack your opponent's shields, and you kind of have to... Mm -hmm. Your opponent has to attack your shields, and that's what creates the hand advantage, and that's what creates things going back and forth. Although, I, it's, it's a tug of war, pretty much, is what they're turning it into, and it's just fast decks. Fast, 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 fast. Um, rush and, all and, the things. Yeah, rush <laughs> everything. Um, if the game comes back, how should it be managed? Like Yu-Gi-Oh! End of story. <laughs> well, as far as tournament and prize support, proper pr proper prize support and events like give us something to go to. Yeah, Draw like, a crowd. No one, like, give we, us something to go to and give us a reason to go to it. Yeah, the last year of uh, tournaments in the English game, they had the major events, Tournament of Five Civilizations, which were awesome, but they if, were based around the locals. Were, yeah, like they, they, they weren't were, they weren't something you travel yeah. to and have fun like experiences. Yeah, yeah Tournament of the Five Civs could have been handled so much better if they'd actually given us prizes more than just promo cards. Like yeah, organize really, a big event, hold it in like a central area. Let Hold it like a convention center, yeah, like, what, like what Yu-Gi-Oh does. We, yes, had, said, like we had nothing to look forward to when these tournaments were over, except for promotional cards and a slightly packs. bigger local. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that it was. Because like two more people came than usual, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. What was that? That first one we went to and oh, that was that was an invitation. Crappy little card shop. It was the tournament of five sips. No, that was an invitational. Was it invitation? Oh, that's it right. Was that was an invitational circuit. circuit. Oh yeah, I about that. You can call them invitationals, but hold them like regionals. But. Yeah. <laughs> We have eight and rounds of Swiss. God, and in the fourteen, have enough people for eight rounds of Swiss. In the fourteen and up division, they had, I think it was, nine people, and your mom finished ninth, if I recall. No, she did not. She topped. Four. Oh, she did top four because that's how you got the Hulkus. No, not not and that Hulkus. That one was stolen. I traded for that one from you. <laughs> well, whatever. That's how yeah, she cool got the yeah, Hulkus. Yeah. And then our four, our thirteen and under division was like. You called, but she said ninth. Of the maybe, fucking maybe fifteenth. No, she got ninth. Remember the one that we went to up in Maryland? That where, was when she top four. Yeah. yeah. No. That no, was she, no, she top four. I remember that. She did not top four up in the I one. Remember that completely. Remember that. Was it? She, she top four twice. No, she only top four once. Charlotte, none of my parents played. I thought your mom. No. I could have sworn your mom played in the one that we went to down in that crappy little car. Oh yeah, shop. she did not do well. That's um, the one I'm talking about. I know she top four in Maryland. Yeah. And that was the one where when we went to, there was a good amount, there was a fair amount, maybe like 40, 50. If my mom can do well, the game needs more skill. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's your, mom, your, mom was good <laughs> your mom was actually really good. Christian's mom yeah. was our tournament organizer yeah. for the two and a half years Duel Masters was here for our yeah. local. Very cool. And she did a hell of a job. She no longer remembers how to play the game. I'm just going to point that but out. But she was good in the past. She was. She's, one... She grew up. I haven't grown up yet. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Um, and I guess Mega Dark Shadow also one of the similarities to Magic, I guess. Uh, colors on the cards, the colors. <laughs> I mean, there's five of them. Well, obviously, all right. Let, Fire let's, is mountain, nature is forest, well, no, let's, let's, water let's, let's is break island. It. All right, let's <laughs> yeah. break it down. Mana. You just did. <laughs> mana. You're playing with cards that are designated as no. mana cards versus Duel Masters, anything is mana. Yeah, which is really, really cool. But it... it Puts a, new, <laughs> puts a new aspect of resource. It's resource management. It gives it yeah. the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to, yeah, like, every turn you games. play a mana, you don't just think, oh, that's a mana, let me yeah. put it there. You gotta think, whoa, what don't I need right now? What's yeah. gonna come back later that I need? Thinking ahead. Chess game. Um, Stop saying that. Next, <laughs> they have a 60 card limit. Or they a 60 have a, they card have minimum. A 60 card minimum, right. But that's probably just because they have the cards that need to be mana, you know. Yeah. That's why they need to fit those in. I have to designate that. Yeah. Forty card minimum is fine in Duel Masters. Um, all the effects, obviously. I mean, Magic's been around a hell of a lot longer than Duel mm -hmm. Masters has. It's what the first TCG ever. Yeah, I think so. It's been for twenty plus years, something yeah. like that. It's it's got a pro alpha, circuit. Alpha series. People make living off this game. Which is oh, that's a major difference, dumb. isn't it? Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. They must be making a really shitty pro money. Magic players. Yeah. And make it twenty thousand dollars a year. Our Continentals was held the same day a pro league tourney was being held for Magic. And Fascinating. It's over, I mean, they had at least a thousand people in our convention center where we had this little section blocked off for us. Yeah, they had a, they had a pro lounge where you had to be 
a professional player. You had you had this little like. Yeah, it'd be like where, a card carrying. Yeah, a card carrying oh. professional player, and they would let you into this lounge, and you just sat on the couch. Pretty it sounds like card like carrying douche. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like the professional StarCraft two players. <laughs> Those guys are equally asshole ish. <laughs> like, get on Reddit. No, no okay, really. me neither. But my buddy was showing me this one thing. He's like a professional StarCraft announcer. Oh god! Yeah. So like he just makes bank going to these tournaments and yeah. commentating and narrating for him. Well, that's actually teams. and by if bank, any of you, you guys, mean almost uh, enough to validate your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, if any of you guys are uh, fighting game fans out there, yeah. the listeners, uh, that's the big argument in the fighting game community right now is whether or not uh, the fighting game. Talk about well, whether or not the fighting game community should get absorbed into esports. Okay. What the hell are you talking about? Well, we don't want to get yeah, that. but I we won't get into that. But basically, people making money off. Games, yeah, playing games, off winning. Game. Whereas that's, this game, that's <laughs> uh, that's something <laughs> Duel Masters never had in the two and a half years it was here. I don't. We're know not how saying we need cash it. prizes. We need just like you know. I've seen packs, I've seen some, some of the Japanese show. tourneys. They like air them live. I guess Duel Masters has its own channel or whatever. Yeah, that would be weird. No, and they they air like finals of big tournaments and stuff on TV. Like they yeah, got a show kind of with real people who play the game. And that's kind of strange. It's yeah. I just think feature matches online, just like write about the shit. Whatever. Just it I, I think it's out. neat, but it's it's something we don't have compared to them. Um, what else compared to Magic? Uh, we have so. shields. <laughs> yeah, obviously shields versus light points. Oh, and attacking is completely uh. different. Oh god, yeah, true. And Magic, you yeah, have for to... as much as this game is styled like Magic, yeah. we declare attacks individually. Yeah. Whereas Magic is like, okay, All well, this, time. this, and this are gonna swing. Yeah. And do you have responses to my giant push? Everything in Magic <laughs> is a blocker. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, I like it, but. Tool Masters has its thing. I like the blockers being blockers here. Yeah. Because it makes you think critically about building yeah. your deck. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's another thing. Deck building. Um, coming up with ratios, how... I, I mean, first you take a look, you have to take a look at your meta. We're talking about deck building now. I don't, I don't, <laughs> oh, I boy. I don't know if I just ran into that tangent real quick. We're going okay. to. <laughs> We're going there. But uh, Put on your hats. What time? All right, we still got a little bit of time. How much time? I like 10 minutes. Oh shit! I mean, not till it cuts off, but yeah, we'll you which we'll be wrapping up in a bit. But I get oh, okay. That'll be our final topic: deck building. I want to talk about like playing good. Part two. Topic. We'll make that part two. Okay. Well, no. Well, okay. Last two topics, guys: playing good and deck building. Playing well, but first, playing good. All right. Well, playing decently at least. Come playing on. all right. <laughs> <laughs> playing just playing. Playing good. goodly. <laughs> but okay, so deck building. And this can be this can come into playing good too, but you have to anticipate your meta. You have to know what you're up against mm -hmm. in your current meta. We For us, about. we're up against everything because we just build it. Yeah, we just you know, build whatever the hell we want to. But but then again, we when, also have a four man meta. When, when you think about your deck, it's, a meta. it's like, like every meta combined. Like take a look at control. Control allocates parts of itself to doing different things, but that all work together. You've got anywhere from four to eight cards dedicated to beam blockers to obviously stop attacks. Mm -hmm. You've got Cards to manipulate eight, your you've, hand. Yeah, you've got 8 field. to 12 cards dedicated to hand advantage, drawing cards, replacing itself, bringing itself back at like Energy Stream, Hulkus, Magris. You've got cards, uh, 6 or 7, dedicated to discard, Cranium Clamp, Loco, mm -hmm. Lost Soul. You've got f anywhere from 4 to 8 dedicated to being finishers, stuff that's going to end you the game. 4 to 8? Holy shit, that's well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, like okay. 2. All right. Well, two big well, well, look at our control match that we had. Thanks to all of my finishers, I took advantage. And those weren't even finishers. Those were just good draws after a lost soul. They were big cards that, <laughs> and they were finishing. upsetting. CVH is salty. Salt. He top decked a locomotive, and it was game breaking. So much salt. <laughs> Who can? I but yeah, man, I lost. The, the idea is that you want to everywhere. You need to allocate your deck to doing different things and making sure that they all. Focus on the overall strategy of winning you the game. You mm -hmm. want to build... Which is setting yourself up to a position yeah. where you have more options from, from the beginning. Opponent. Yeah, from the it's beginning. It's a matter of how you want to win and then how you're going to get to that point. Yeah. Starting off with cards like Emerald, setting yeah. yourself up for a little bit of defense should the opponent be an aggressive player, to mid-game destroying creatures that they play and summoning cards that draw you cards and bouncing their stuff back, and then finally dropping a finisher and having enough advantage over their field to start attacking and eventually winning the game. 
and you want to just have answers to your opponent throughout all that. And, and every so play you make should have a reason. Like, you shouldn't just do something that's not going to put you in a better situation. Like, even if it's just playing another creature to give you, like, that little bit of advantage down the board, like, you you have to have, like, a good reason for doing it. You don't want to yeah. do something that doesn't, you know, it's not... You could like, be doing something better. Like, take, for instance, control versus control. If I have a turn two Squido, not going to play it. If I know I'm playing control, I'm not going to play that turn two Squido. If I'm, especially if I'm going first, because that puts me at a hand disadvantage. Should they have hand discard on their turn? And they four. play cranium plan. If you have one less useless card to discard, you have to yeah, discard. You something have to discard something that you wanted to keep in order to deal with their deck at that point. Yeah. Anytime you play a card, and maybe it's not like horrible then, but you think later, whoa, if I had done something else, it would have been better. That's a misplay. And like yeah. the point, like you could still win the game, but. You know, if you could have played it better, the point is to just get to the point where you're making the best play or the most not, optimal all the time. Yeah, and we're not saying misplays don't happen. Like I do it. Yeah, think, it, I we watch all the deck. You know. Yeah, think about like we make a decision based on where we're at at that time. But it, and it goes back watching these back now. It's like, wow, I didn't know I was gonna draw that later. I wish I'd done this differently. But you couldn't anticipate that. You made the best play at the time. Well, that's because sometimes, you didn't sometimes know what was I've noticed happen. that I have made the worst, like, the, the less optimal play, you know, just based on what I had. Like, I could have done something better even without knowing what I was going to draw next. But that comes yeah. back to help you in the end, possibly. I no, I lost saying. that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm saying this. Say yeah. you make the least optimal play, but then two turns down the road, you're like, wow, I'm glad I still have this. And yeah, that it happens sometimes. Out for you. It doesn't yeah. make it like the right. Like, you could, you know, it just it happens. Yeah. You know. But it happens a lot more that you make the wrong play and it doesn't work out for you. Yeah. Of course. It's like. That's why they skill. <laughs> It's like I have Brawler's Isler in hand. Oh god, and here we go. I have four mana, Brawler's <laughs> Isler in hand, and a Kuril. And he has one creature, it's like a blocker that, you know, has is in the way of two effect. creatures that he has on the field. That blocker's in his way. Play the Kuril down and make I also have two power fighters Brawler. in my hand to play the Kuril. Like, Brawler's Isler, I could play two power fighters and swing if I wanted to do that too. I have two solid options and one shitty option. <laughs> <laughs> and. Making and by I, I mean Malcolm Parker. God. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop name dropping. We love you, Malcolm. Yeah. Malcolm, we love you, but you made a bad play. Though. I love you, Malcolm. That was, was the great. first day we tried to film, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, God. That was against you, too. Oh, I know. That was the first game. <laughs> Did you win that game? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, it. go back to if you actually sat through my 30-minute rush profile. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Turn three. I could summon the Pyre Fighter or summon the two mana and the one drop creature. If I summon the Pyre Fighter with the two creatures I have on field and break their last three shields, cool. But now they have answers to deal with my field hand, possibly anything. So instead, let me summon two creatures, just break two of their shields, leave them with one left, and now the opponent has much more to deal with, both on field and in hand, than they would have otherwise. And, like, so, I'm not going to say, like, anyone's a bad player, but the bad players are the ones that are like, well, I played the Pyre Fighter, and, like, I still won that game because they didn't get an answer. So, yeah, you know, there, yeah. that makes it the best play, right? Well, no, you still could have played yeah, better and put yourself in a better situation to win where they had less answers to you. I mean, you might win should you not make this, the right play, but yeah, it doesn't, that's going to make it the best lot play. less yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's You know, it's about getting better, not about, you know, just winning, just winning that game. Yeah. Because, you know, you're going to find that you're going to lose games. If you had just learned from your plays earlier, you're going to win more games than, yeah. you know, later. You're just going to learn how to set yourself up. And in yeah, big events, which we didn't really have, but in big events, it's that kind of attitude that's going to make you consistent enough to get through, like, eight rounds of Swiss with a 7-1 record, you know? Yeah. You might lose once to a dumb thing, like, that's lucky. Yeah, we all... But you have to be consistent. We all draw bad. I yeah. mean, there's, there's that level of luck in Duel Masters, but it's a lot less than in other games. So, so in my opinion... <laughs> in my opinion. Now girls, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, Duel Masters involves a lot more skill than a lot of other games. And uh, it, it, or it just, nah. Okay. It involves a lot less luck. Yeah. So. Okay. Or a lot more if you think about shields, but at the same time, that just makes you have to but think harder. It makes you have to think harder. Yeah. <laughs> but there's answers for those shields. Like Bomadius yeah. Cryptic, so. Yeah, there's a way to reduce that. There's a way to reduce the luck in Duel Masters. Which you don't see in other games. Well, I'm satisfied, fellas. That so. was fun. Anything to say, Gorby? Uh, Any final thoughts, fellas? Yeah. 
I don't know. I mean, <laughs> most of the stuff I contributed, I think, is more trying to get a perspective on somebody who's newer to the game. Yeah. You know, who doesn't have... They were yeah, take, take, take note here. Me and Christian have been playing the game since... Well, I've been playing since it came out in 2004. Yeah, because so much and happened between sets one and three. It, well, I six say, months. Yeah, six months of horrible playing in Chris Def Con. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, I met. I came into the game, yeah. built water, mono water, and people told me Corel was bad. So <laughs> it was like, <laughs> so you were just like, I was like, I'm okay Christian. at this game already. <laughs> in like one week. <laughs> but me and Christian have been pretty much playing the game since it came out, and our good friend Gordon here came into the game, at, <laughs> waving. <laughs> He's waving because you can't see it. There he but is. uh. Wave in there. You're not, they they're not going to see this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, anyway. Right there. But our buddy Gordon here got into the game, what, two years maybe ago? I don't know. I, met, I, I met you, what, like two oh, and a half years senior ago? Senior year, yeah. It was like the end of senior year. About two and a half years ago. Yeah. yeah and it was that first Gordon, night at Comic Chest. Yeah. And I guess and I met Gordon became, around the same time for yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. So me and Gordon became friends, and then I taught him to Masters, and here we are today. So it, uh, in terms of yeah, experience, it, the funny thing is, we've got... Oh, about plus five, so yeah. Well, I mean, that, and that's why you won't it. hear me talking. But about, the cool thing is, know, it's an easy game to learn, but a difficult. I'm gonna sound really dumb and corny saying this. No, it's easy game right. to learn, difficult game. To master. To master. <laughs> it's CBH. Well, again, that's not like, yeah, yeah, but it's just true. Chess. You know, you gotta just yeah. It's like that. basic, simple strategy. You know what the pieces do. They all do the same thing. Uh, well, not all the same. Yeah. All the pieces do the same. But you know what I mean. And that yeah. that simple that, fact that's easy to learn makes it really sellable. Yeah. Like people yeah. play chess. Easy. And people will buy dual matches. Yeah, packs. Easy to learn, and then there's so much strategy when you get in depth with it. But and dual match is the same exact way, and pretty much the same basic setup. Since you know, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn. No real responses in between that, except for the shield triggers, which, of course, they're cool. They yeah. So, which is a mechanic that involves itself there. But I mean, that's why you won't hear me chime in on like you know big event play and everything like that in this game because I really only know it at a casual level mm -hmm. you know a lot of my tournament level experience comes from playing Yu-Gi-Oh and even then it's well, yeah. more or less just like local top 8s and the occasional X3 to regional to go to uh, so, me uh, and Carl have top 8 at Yu-Gi-Oh regionals we're yeah. cool me and, and I gone have... X2 to Light Sworn like 50 times oh, so much <laughs> <laughs> Carl has also forgotten to MST the Solemn Judgment oh my god that's what I was trying to remember when <laughs> I was Russ? Russ? oh my oh, god I crap like I just I, why <laughs> Gordon Hunt why summon Dark Arm so Dragon and, and use priority to target the, the back, back row <laughs> got his dumb ass bottom list <laughs> shit happens man <laughs> oh, he's running He's running Angel. Don't worry about that. Oh, God. Oh, God. But anyway, right, 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 we, right, we, we, right, we, we get it. 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 I guess to sum up. <laughs> you've made misplays at Duel Masters too. Yeah. The misplays happen. You mm -hmm. just you deal with it. You learn and you yeah. move on. But you learn. That's the most important yeah. step. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget, like, you know, summoning that Power Fighter at that time was a bad mistake. Yeah. Learn to set yourself up. Like, no, you didn't summon a Power Fighter. You summoned the Brawlers. Well, Zyler. whatever. <laughs> Anyways. We're not necessarily talking about yeah. that situation, but all situations like that. Yeah. Good stuff. And that's how... Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I had something else to say, but... I Me guess too. I didn't. We'll, we'll leave it behind. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, that's it for us, YouTube. It's like 12, 20. Well, guys, if you stayed with us, let us know. Comment. And tell me that you were actually... Or at least watch part of it. At least part of it. Guys, that like button... Blah, blah. Okay. Like that, button. The like button is the, important. The like button. Very important, guys. Leave me a like mm -hmm. if, if you liked it, obviously. But, I mean, <laughs> that like button is how people find us on YouTube and find out that we're out there so I mean it's a big help and the it, dislike button it just makes me feel fuzzy inside so yeah, if you guys want to make me feel fuzzy inside fuzzy show, just show, like his face show, <laughs> yeah and his neck now it's like creeping down I the like, X-Men thing going he on looks now, like, he just looks dirty <laughs> you need to shave it I'm getting rid of it but uh, I'm about to like point the camera towards you so you can see the neck they're not gonna see it you could put it on there I'm not okay but but to go back <laughs> that like button guys is, is super important so leave me a like if you liked it leave me a like in the future and uh and check out wcnulive.com. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, plug in for the radio. That's good. Because I've been plugging Carl on my radio yep. show consistently. You because have? I enjoy this. Yeah, I oh, am. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. And, okay. Awesome. and my radio show is kick ass anyway. So. I'm going to start leaving the link on all my channels. Thursday, 6 to 8. Be there. But, I mean, you're not going to be We're not ending with that. I mean, you have to end with it's, something. It's over for the month, though. Yeah, it's over until next month. So I'll check yeah. in now. It's, but it takes a month during college. Right, can we not end on that? All right, guys. We won't end on that. We're getting out of here. Don't
Okay, we're ending on it. That, that, <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, no. I mean, yeah, Duel Masters, but yeah. we're done. The Duel Masters. We've talked Fuck. a lot, and it's it's been almost an hour and a half now. Uh, so thanks, guys, for sticking with us. Let me know if you watch the whole thing, and uh, or at least some of it. Yeah. And, and yeah, just tell me what you think, and uh, if you have any more questions, and maybe suggestions for improvement. Yeah. In yeah, the future, we'll hopefully get to another one of these, and. Uh, and any we'll concrete info on the game, you know, it's yeah. welcome. Yeah. Because I'm not following that shit. You know, just yeah. Post or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll keep up with it, though. Yeah. Carl but, will. All right, guys. I guess that's it for us uh, from Earth Power, CBH. Gorby. <laughs> we'll hopefully see you guys next time. <laughs> Love you, guys. Peace. <laughs> Bye,